What is going on, everybody? This is Audible Sports Kids. How's it going, everybody? We have finally made it. It's the playoffs in the National Football League. While a lot of teams that some of us, aka me and Brett with the Bears, might be rooting for didn't make it, it's still playoff football. And it's it's just, it's it's, it's, it's super exciting. This is, you know, I mean, obviously every game matters, but this is when it really matters. Winners continue, losers go home. You know, this is for some people, a.k.a. Ben Roethlisberger, their last chance, you know, at another Super Bowl. Or their first Super Bowl. Why don't we go right into that? Well, hey, we will in just one second. Let's 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 talk about the regular season for, for a second here, okay? You know, Week 18, there's a lot of, you know, exciting games. And, you know, we, we, we've been picking these games for a while. You think we'd be, you know, be, you know, by the end of Week 18, we'd know what we're doing. We'd have pretty good... We win, did not do win well. Loss. We did okay. I went eight and eight, five hundred. You know, reasonable. You went nine and seven. And so what that means is for the entire regular season, even though you came in a little, you start doing these. I don't know about what week three. Yep. You went a hundred and twelve and sixty eight for your picks. Well, that's like a sixty six percent. It's a sixty two on the sixty two percent. I went 115 and 81, which is about 58, 58%. So, in theory, you did a lot better. Not in theory, you did. So, congratulations. You, you Thank had. You. You're welcome. I mean, no. I mean, I did have a lot of, you know, I kind of went for a lot of uh, kind of underdogs. But hey, that's that's me. That's what I do. So let's. I did too. Yeah, you it did. Just, it, you just, like you like picked you, them right. Like you like. You've said lots of times any given Sunday. It's just sometimes it's just guessing. That sometimes. that is true. I mean, that's why there's a lot of famous TikTokers out there that just let their babies pick games, and they have good records. I have not seen that yet. But. Well, I'm sure you'll see it eventually, especially during here in the playoffs or even in March Madness. Oh boy, just wait till we talk about March Madness. But that's later. That's in March. We're in January. Now we're in NFL playoffs. Let's talk Super Wild Card Weekend. You know, last year they added the extra seed, so there's even more playoff games to talk about. There's a game on Nickelodeon, Slime Time Touchdowns. I'm ready for it. I don't know if you are, but let's get right into it. And let's start with, with the game you were alluding to earlier. Steelers heading into Kansas City, play the Chiefs. Game that happened you know, just a couple weeks ago, blowout in Kansas City. But I don't know if necessarily this game will be a no. blowout like it was last time. This is Big Ben's last ride. You know, and it, this is for sure. It's not like he's debating. Mm-hmm. This is it. it. It really is. I, I think Pittsburgh wins this game. They've got all the Kansas City's got all the pressure, and Pittsburgh's got all the hype in that locker room right now. You know. Yeah, I mean, it's, I, I, it's wanting to win and then winning for Ben as well. I, uh, I mean, I can see a way where Pittsburgh wins this game, but I don't. I, I just don't know if Ben Roethlisberger can get them over the top, even with, you know, players around him playing good. I, do I think Ben still, you know, has a little bit? Yeah, but, you know, this is a Kansas City team that he is... You would think he's going to leave it all on the field. Oh, he definitely will, but how much left is there to leave? A couple legs. Ah, yeah, but he's also going against a, you know, Kansas City Chiefs team that, yeah, they had troubles yes, the against... defense is playing well, but they... they to me, they're an up and down team all year. So is Pittsburgh, but I I don't know. I'm taking the gamble, and I got to go Pittsburgh. Yeah, I'm, I'm. I would actually like to see Pittsburgh in the Super Bowl. I mean, just I would too. His last ride. 
I'll be honest with you. I would love to see a Big Ben Brady Super Bowl. That would be a very interesting Super Bowl. It, I mean, when you look at who has made it to the last, you know, who has won the last couple, like the last Super Bowl, the Super Bowl since pretty much 2000, majority of the of them have been Peyton Manning, Ben Roethlisberger, or Tom Brady. So hey, we'll be getting one last one potentially. I mean, I guess Tom Brady will still be here for a while. Line on that one is. Uh, last I checked, well, for them, I don't know what it was, if it was them to make it or to win, but it was at one time plus 9,000 for one of those things. So, um, I'm looking you, right now. You know, I made, did make a $1 bet on that to potentially win $90, but hey, don't gamble, kids or adults. So, after finding some stuff it, on court, um, courtesy of FanDuel, um, for the Pittsburgh Steelers to win the Super Bowl is plus 9,000, which for those new for betting, plus 9,000 bets means $100 wins you $9,000. But, you know, that's that's there's a reason why it's that. It's it's decently it's a pretty long shot. It is. It's a it is a pretty big long shot. I I I, I got to go Chiefs. I just it, it's hard for me to go against the Chiefs. The times I have gone against the Chiefs, I've kind of, you know, lost it a lot of times. And yes, Pittsburgh's defense is pretty good, but Kansas City's offense, you have to score a lot to beat them, no matter how good Pittsburgh kind of their defense is. It. I mean, I haven't you haven't really seen them do it that this year. The problem is they have if he had all his weapons, at least Juju back and, you know, Claypool wasn't Claypool, um, I feel like he would I don't know. Tough it's, to say. It, it's potential. And you know, it would you know, definitely with a better offensive line for them to have a better run game because Najee Harris definitely has shown some promise. But we'll see. I mean, I, I I'm no matter how this game goes, I'll be rooting for Ben. I'll be rooting for him for as 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 far as he goes. But I think this is where his train ends, unfortunately. Next up, let's keep it in the AFC and let's go directly into a matchup against two AFC East opponents. We have the New England Patriots heading to cold cold Buffalo, New York, where it's supposed to be a very cold game. The Buffalo Bills. Both these Why don't you start this one? Both both these teams went, you know, one and one against each other in com- two completely different games. I mean, we look at the first game they played where I think the Patriots, you know, won only throwing it two or three times, which, you know, it's, it's, which is funny because the Colts did the exact same thing against them, even though their weather was not a component pretty much. And then, you know, once there's a lot of better weather, Bills, you know, that often showed. And, you know, the Bills are one of those teams that are actually kind of hot. Yes, they kind of struggle a little bit against the Jets, but, you know, divisional games are always different. You, It's hard to really take them, in, you know, completely. Same with, you know, Kansas City last week against Denver. Denver and you know so many of these other games you know you have to really take with a grain of salt no matter who they are what they are but Buffalo's really hot New England's kind of struggled the last couple weeks somewhat but didn't you say snow I I did I'm still going Buffalo so even besides that I just why did, why why did me saying snow make you make you think that I was going New England I don't know I I here I I think it's Buffalo but let's get into some of your reasoning what do you think oh I it's big it's experience, coaching, and I think the run game in New England's better. Okay, that, I mean that's definitely true. But... I mean if if Josh Allen isn't isn't able to sling it down the field, that limits their offense a lot. Where New where England's Josh... perfectly yeah. perfectly fine doing ground and slow and that is very true. And they have you know they've kind of went back to their old New England system where just you know different running backs are doing the job right now. The undrafted. Well, they've kind of never really won away from that. That 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 is true, but I mean, yeah, it, New England does kind of have the slight advantage there in a situation like this. But I mean, Singletary has been playing a little bit better. Well, he's been playing good. Seen. I mean, I just think it's, in my opinion, it's new, if if the weather's crappy, it's New England's game to lose. Not if the weather's clear, I'm going to go Buffalo. But I think we given this that it's going to that it's potential snow. It's going to be really cold. <sighs> Josh Allen isn't. I don't know. He's Can just Josh not Allen just like do himself. it himself? Is know. he good? I mean, it. It's a tough. This one. is These where games I think tough. the mistake. Like, cause with Josh Allen, the difference between him and he will gamble a little and throw picks. He does do that, but he usually makes up for it. And he's he's still very talented, but I don't know. I don't know if they get over the hump this year with the way they've been playing. I just don't. I think they're one and done. It's it's possible. I mean, the Bills did, you know, go to the AFC Championship, and they have a lot or last year, and they have a lot of, you know, kind of grudge about not making it. And I know, yes, yeah, so we'll definitely need – I don't know. We'll see. I think it's going to be – I think that's a defensive game. 
who's ever defense plays Oh, definitely. And the Buffalo Bills currently have the number one defense in kind okay. of total. So it's definitely interesting. I think it potentially might not be the high scoring game, but definitely a game that could be the best of the bunch. But moving on to this next game, it's not really one you see a lot. One, because both of these teams don't make it to playoffs a lot. And two, when they do make it, they don't win. Both of these teams haven't won in nearly 10 years a playoff game. One of these teams, which hasn't won a playoff game since the early 90s. And of course, these two teams we're talk- I'm talking about are the Las Vegas Raiders, who have to go into a what could be very cold Cincinnati to play the Bengals. Now, which one of these teams is going to break their playoff kind of st- uh, I wouldn't I don't want to call it a streak because it's Cincinnati. I mean a losing streak. I'm just going to shoot right into it because Cincinnati is playing way better. I I definitely agree with that and they're a little bit more rested because they didn't play as much last week but then again a lot of times how you know there's always that age old question does resting help you know there's a lot of situations where where we yeah, see it doesn't I, Some people say it does some people swear by it. I feel bad for Derek Carr. I feel like he's kind of getting the shaft in the NFL for the fact he just li- so many coaches, so many personnel changes, so many different players, and he's the only fixture that stayed. And how do you expect him to be successful if that all happens? Yeah, that's true, and we'll definitely get into that a little bit later on a certain in our next segment. But, yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely hard. I mean, the amount of kind of just – I mean, you, all, you have to give the Raiders props for even being here with the season they've had. I mean, the loss of a coach, they're like – arguably number one receiver at least at that point was looking like it especially with Waller out I mean the amount of secondary players they've lost to different legal situations and not to mention you know John Madden one of the you know icons of that franchise um, passing away very late into the season yeah but, I mean I just I haven't been high on the Raiders all year so I'm gonna keep with that I mean, you were pretty high on them last last week to, for them to make it to the playoffs, and hey, they made it, so you're just glad they well, made it. Just last week, because I thought they would get that push, but now I just Cincinnati's been playing really well. That's just... Yes, they have, and I mean, the fact we're saying that is amazing. That it was a, it's been a great turnaround for them. I mean, Joe Burrow looks like the future for them, and they have a lot of young players that will be around there for a couple years. So, can you imagine them drafting another receiver too? They won't. They'll definitely go a different direction, whether it be offensive line or secondary. even secondary. But we'll see. They have a couple deep, you know, secondary pieces that have been playing good and are key reason why they're there. But, yeah, they definitely could use some more help. So, yeah, I'm going I'm to join you. I'm going to go Cincinnati. I just – I mean, hey, the, you don't, don't sleep on the Raiders, though. I mean <laughs> – No, no. I just think I'm basing it off of – what I've seen in the last few weeks. And oh, yeah, definitely. And Bengals keep in mind... Are, are coming in red hot. And, and you know, you got to keep in mind, these are the best of the best. It isn't just like a situation where we're picking someone who's like the outright, you know, definite winner. Like, any of these teams can win any of these games. So, you know, it, it, it's definitely interesting to say the least. And I, I feel like, you know... Some of the best games ever we played are definitely playoff games. Obviously, I mean, here Cincinnati could come out and flop because they're a young team. Oh yeah, definitely. But same thing for the Raiders. I mean, they who knows how much of that is left in their tanks after last, you know, even last week's game. Again, where that you could say is probably the best game of maybe the century. That's a little much, Whoa. but it was a pretty good game. It, you, if you watch the Raiders Chargers game, it was pretty good. Whether you thought they're going to tie or not, it was a good game. I mean, I agree. It was a, it was a great game, but you're, I mean, you're basing that up against like Tom Brady's comeback in the Super Bowl. Yeah, well, I mean, let's call it the be- one of the greatest regular season games. How about that? Okay. Fair. All right. Well, that's the AFC. Let's move on to the a- NFC, and there's there's a lot of interesting games. I feel like that you know, kind of at least for me, are hard to read. And with this first one, we have NFC West showdown. Two teams that were kind of fighting back and forth to try to win that di- um, division. We have the Arizona Cardinals heading to L.A. to play the Rams. Can the Rams continue what the Bucks did last year and win in their home stadium a Super Bowl? Well, I think they can win this game. I'm not going to go that far. That's fair. It's, there's still a lot of games to be played. 
But, I mean, I'm having troubles even picking them to win this game. I mean, they haven't really looked to get that good the last couple of weeks. I mean, yeah, they struggled against, you know, 49ers team that is just, you they know. They have a good defense. Is Yeah, exactly. I think it's kind of a good compliment against them, especially, you know, a division foe that they haven't beat in a very long time. But at the same time, it, it, it's tough. I mean, both of these teams, you know, they went one on and both one. Side, on both oh, teams, yeah. it's a... Is J.J. I mean, Watt going to both... be back for this game? or is it? You, what... Yes, that's what I hear. But I, they're almost... If you look at some, of, even some of the older stars in these teams, they're, it's kind of like the Nets on both of them. I, I mean, I Meaning can Meaning they have a lot that. of stars. A lot of star power. Oh, yeah. You know, I'm, I'm going to go against you with the Cardinals. I just, with the way Matt Stafford's been playing, I feel like that defense will be, because that, with especially, I mean, Watt isn't maybe what he used to be, but, well, you know, he's still He doesn't someone, have much playoff experience. I, he doesn't, but he does have a playoff win. No, oh, wait, was he healthy the year the Texans beat the Raiders? I know Jadavion Clowney played, had a pick six in that game, but I can't remember, but that's beside the point. I mean, yeah, I mean, both of these teams, how much playoff experience? I mean, yeah, Sean, I mean, I guess Sean McVay does have some. Aaron Donald, you know, they went to a Super Bowl not too long ago. But, yeah, I'm going to go Cardinals. I think just, you know, I think they're going to keep Matt Stafford a little uh, on the st- struggle bus, which he's kind of been on the last couple of weeks. So I, I'm going to go Cardinals. And I think... Yeah, that Cardinals offense can definitely do some damage. It's I mean, going to be tough. This is, way, I mean, so this is another game I could see being low, low, either very low scoring and very high scoring with the way these kind of offenses are, but at the same time defenses. So, I don't know. I, I, it's a very fun game. Potentially, I mean, it's got the Monday night spot, so, you know, potentially game of the week. But I don't know. All these games should be really fun. But a game I see as being kind of same old, same old when it comes to both of these teams is the 49ers versus the Cowboys. The Cowboys, it seems like, always, you know, kind of come into the playoffs. This and then, is a historic matchup. In a oh, way. it is. I mean, these are were the teams of kind of the, you know, of the late 80s, late 80s, 90s. 90s, and even, you know, the 70s a little bit. Or not the 70s, but the Cowboys, I guess, maybe a little bit. Ah, I'm getting my decades off here. These are two historic franchises. These were the elite NFC teams from, like, 84 to midnight. Yeah, I mean, some of the greatest playoff, you know, moments. You talk about the, you know, the Clark-Montana, you know, pass in the end zone. That's against the Cowboys. You know, you have Jerry Rice versus Deion Sanders. You have, you know, I think even Steve Young when he's yelling. No, that was the Super Bowl when he's yelling, get off the monkey off my back. But that, I had to beat the Cowboys to get to that Super Bowl. Yep. I mean... I have to go Dallas. I think Dak's playing really well. I think that's the – it's going to be quarterback play here for me. Nothing I, else. I, I kind of – I'm going the other way. I think 49ers are set up perfectly to beat that Cowboys defense. They have a really good run offense. And when we look at kind of the – I mean, I know every team's different, but when you look at so many of these Cowboy um, teams that make it to the playoffs, they always get just destroyed by a running offense. Yeah, and I think that's this right, I mean, that, this 49ers team I think is perfect against this team. I mean, they have a very how many good running front. back injuries they have in the last two years, three years they've had so many injuries. I I I mean I don't know who Kyle Shanahan's running back coach is, but he needs to he needs to be like given a some milk. Oh no, he needs <laughs> he needs to be paid. Just kidding. They, but, they have a good ta- they have a good eye for running backs over there. Yes. Oh, definitely. Whether I mean it's just it's amazing, and I think th- with the mixture of you know having a very good offensive line, keep in mind they do you, do you know who their center is for the 49ers? No, Alex Mack. Oh, they still oh he's still around. That's Trent right. Williams, yeah, Alex Mack, and a handful of you know players that have been around for the guys. 49ers yeah. for you know a couple several years now. That's a really good offensive line and one that can definitely compete with this Cowboys defense. So I'm going to go 49ers on the road in Jerry World to beat the Cowboys. And you definitely didn't hear it here, hear it here first, but you, you're you hearing it here. <laughs> but next up we got the Philadelphia Eagles going into a place that some people might not want to go into. But some people maybe do want to go into there. We have the Eagles going into Tampa to play the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. A team th- this this matchup did happen early in the year and I would argue, you know, if it wasn't for a few Jalen Hurts inaccuracies and I would say even a little bit of ref uh Tom Brady fondleness. Um Eagles definitely could have won that game. 
but that was early in the season. That was really before the Eagles turned into this amazing running team. And I, I, I don't know. This is a tough one. The, the Buccaneers have kind of been on a little bit struggling with how much kind of players they've lost. They've lost. Yeah, players. they, they, I think are down three or four. You know, wide starting wide receivers. There's three or four players in each side of the ball. Yeah, and I mean, I can't. I'm not at, at least at this point. I'm not going against Brady. No, I refuse to. This is hard for me because I want to go against Brady, and I don't think Brady won a Super Bowl only because of a certain little uh, thing that's been happening the last what ten years, where if Alabama wins the national championship, Tom Brady wins it. But when Alabama doesn't win it, Tom Brady doesn't. And guess what happened last this last week? Alabama lost. So, that, of course, that doesn't mean, you know, he won't get to the Super Bowl. He's went to the Super Bowl while Alabama's lost the championship. But, you know, it makes me weary every single week to pick him. But That is a really weird statistic. It is, and it's... It has really no bearing on anything. It but doesn't, it a, but really, it's the it's fact that it exists. It's very interesting and odd. I mean, it's one thing for it to happen every couple years, but for it to be a thing since pretty much Alabama's won its first national championship. And Nick Saban's tied kind of to Bill Belichick a little bit. It's weird. Uh, it And there's, yeah, he, the... the Patriots have. I mean, obviously, he's not on the Patriots yeah. anymore. But Hold on, has that curse gone away because he's not on the Patriots? Alabama won it last year. Tom Brady won it last year. So right. it is I'm, following Tom Brady no matter where he goes. Who knows? Maybe Tom I'll Brady. I'll stick with one of the few NFL players who's older than me. So Tom Brady. I mean, yeah, that's Buccaneers. fair. I mean, you. Buccaneers by 10. Also, when's the last time Tom Brady's won, lost in the wild card? I mean, yeah, he, I was, does, he hasn't been to it a lot, but. I'm 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 I got I'm going Bucks. I I I I don't want to doubt Brady quite yet. Let's wait until I'm surprised it. that Edelman he hasn't coaxed Edelman out. Well, did you see what Edelman, Edelman posted the other week or the other day? Couple, a couple weeks ago? No, a couple days ago. He he like no. made this uh, video of him telling his parents he put a hundred thousand dollars on the on the Bucks to win the Super Bowl. Or no, I don't know if it's for the Bucks to win, but well, it now was he for, can't play. So, but it was for Brady. It was for the Bucks and the Patriots to go to the Super Bowl, I think, not for the Bucks to win it. Admittingly opening, um, admitting those bets, yeah. He, it's not a good time for him to play right now. He, like, he can't. Oh, well, exactly. Unless he wants, you know, the, hitting him to, you know. The, and Amendola was to, on a roster last year, wasn't he? he Amendola Fine. currently is on the Texans. Oh, Texans, that's where he is, yeah. So he's kind of stuck where he's at. He, he can't really. Chris Hogan? Uh, retired. He, I think he's a lacrosse, either a lacrosse player or coach. Oh, that's right. He wanted no. He wanted to retire to play lacrosse. Yes, that's right. So yeah, I mean, hey, he's he's still got Gronk. That's all mm-hmm. that matters, as long as Gronk's healthy. So hey, knock on wood if you want Gronk to. Stay I mean, healthy. if you look at a lot of the receivers in New England, they were nobodies. So he, it, this is no different in a way for him. Oh yeah, I mean, look at what Scotty Miller did last year in the playoffs, especially against the Packers, and and he didn't play much at all this year. No, he he didn't, which is kind of interesting to me. I thought they'd you know give him a lot more attention, but you know they were kind of busy with. Antonio Brown, Mike Evans, and Chris Godwin. But now some of those players are gone, so let's, you know, let's see what Scotty Miller's got. And, you know, Brashad Perriman's there, too. He's been playing, you know, pretty good the last couple of weeks since they've added him. So, yeah, he has. You know, that's someone who's kind of revitalized their career after. Well, and if they get their run game going, it takes a lot of pressure off Brady. Oh, yeah. Playoff Lenny is something you need to watch out for because that's pretty much one of the but main he's reasons. He's not 100%. No, but who knows? Maybe. But they also have Jones, too, who can. Ronald fall Jones, out if yeah. need be. But. Yeah, those, we'll see. I mean, just keep an eye. Don't maybe put all your, you know, eggs in the basket with the pa- or the Bucks. I'm so used to Brady being on the Patriots. I keep saying it every time, but he's on the Bucks. He's, but, yeah, just don't keep, you know, don't put all your eggs in one basket with him. That's, that's the playoff games. You know, as the weeks go, we'll have less and less playoff games to talk about. It's going to be sad. But, you know, we have some pretty cool things lined up for the Super Bowl and maybe even a few other things, you know. So we'll see how that goes. But let's move on to... The usual, you know, the next subject, the add a legend. We're going to continue that until, you know, we probably die. Not really. We're going to continue until we're, you know, we run out of teams to talk about. But we're, we're, um, you know, same old things always. You know, we'd look at an NFL team. We'd pick a player from their past that has played, that has retired, has played there for, you know, at least four years. And we really try to think, hey, what's going to give them the best opportunity to, I mean, if they're one of these playoff teams, you know, make it to the Super Bowl or, you know, just 
you know, as we've seen for a lot of these teams, just to try to win a game. So with this week, we do have a playoff team here. One neither of us said is going to win. The Las Vegas Raiders. What player in their past, which is a very rich and historic past, what player do you think gets them to maybe even, hmm. you know, who's going to help them beat the Bengals this week? Jamarcus Russell. No, you, Just kidding. leave. Just just get out. Don't. Uh, Charles Woodson is my pick. I mean, he, he proved himself on the Raiders, the Packers, and back on the Raiders. That he was still a good, talented, like a top-tier talent. So I have to give it to him. Oh, yeah. I mean, you're looking at I defensive. mean, they've had some great defensive players there. The D-line oh, yeah. over the years has been great. But I think Woodson's a quarterback of the defense, and he's a, team, a huge team leader. So it's just... It's a it's a no brainer for me. Yeah, not just that, but you know, you're looking at you know a defensive player of the year, mind you. He I think technically did win it with the Packers, but it's beside the point. He's still really good both stints with the Raiders. But you know, you're looking at a secondary that's kind of been depleted in some ways. Yeah, they have Casey Hayward, which some people forget, but you know they've lost a couple guys because of you know some of these legal issues. So having a guy like Charles Woodson is very you know, is very much needed, especially going against this Cincinnati team where, you know, you got Charles Woodson, you can kind of take away that whole side of the field, you know, maybe limit someone like Jamar Chase or, you know, Tyler Boyd or just, or Higgins. So, you know, it's, you you gotta do something and, you know, that, that is a good pick. That is definitely someone who can help a lot, but I'm going a little bit of a different direction. You know, we talked a lot about how, you know, Derek Carr has been kind of stranded there with, maybe not a lot of help or you know he's, he's got a few guys he's got a few guys and darren waller is a pretty good guy and renfro sorry yeah renfro sorry. too but, but he's not they need a dog the they need themselves a dog and when you think of players they've had in their past you know they've had a lot of good receivers you know they you can go old school with a couple guys but you know they use some sometimes they've had illegal some substances. really good guys you know short stints though less than a, only a year two yeah i mean jerry rice was there but he's only i mean I, he randy was moss. there but he was near the end of his career randy moss too many randy issues when it comes yeah so I'm going to go with a dude who is known as being a Raider because he was there for a long time. He's one of the better. He's honestly one of the most forgotten wide receivers when it comes to the NFL. You know, a lot of people think of Jerry Rice, Randy Moss, T.O., Larry Fitzgerald, among many others, Calvin Johnson. You know, the list goes on and on. But someone no one really talks about is Tim Brown. He's for, you know? He is a forgotten. He, I mean, Tecmo Super Bowl, he was the best receiver to use. Yes. I know that's beyond your years but oh yes that's just you're showing your age with that short but i would say very very quick i mean yeah not to mention you know he's definitely you know one of the not only he's he's one of the main reasons that team made it to a super bowl in the early 2000s too i mean he won he was an amazing receiver at every level of course you know Heisman winner at Notre Dame, so you know that, that you got my you got me already liking it because of how big I love Notre Dame. But that's beside the point. He's just a really good wide receiver, and you know you're giving Derek Carr, like I said earlier, a dog. You know, one of the top receivers I would argue of all time. Maybe not I mean, top he's five. Spent Seventeen but... years there. Exactly. So. so you know, not only is this you're getting a good player, but you're getting a Raider. That is a Raider right there. Yeah. He's a Raider through and through. So, you know, and, you know, when you're going against this team like Cincinnati, like I talked about, I I didn't really talk about it with them, but you need to score. And having a receiver like Tim Brown to go with Darren Waller or some of these other younger guys, that's, that's, that, that would make Derek Carr very happy. And he's very reliable. I think he might be, not be up there for yards, but I'm pretty sure he is in the top five for catches of all time. He is in the Hall of Fame. Of, yes. Um, now, here's a fun fact. You, you, I know you know he went where he went to college. As yep. What's the other NFL team he played for? I. That's a good question. Uh, I, 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 I. A lot of players go to Seattle to die. Was it Seattle? No, it was Tampa. Oh, in Tampa. 04. So he. That's in, So he. That's. So he went to the place that beat them in the yep. Super Bowl. That's interesting. But isn't that when uh, Gruden? Yeah, I th- Gruden, Gruden was, was still there, but what was it, for only a year? Yeah, I don't know. It, yeah, he, I didn't know that, but yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Just looking him up just to see. Yeah, I mean, I was a little bit wrong. Tim Brown was seventh in all-time in catches, but yeah, that that's definitely interesting. You know, I mean, not trying to talk too much, but he, he is the first wide receiver to win a Heisman Trophy as well. Yeah, but, you know, that's college, you know, 
you know, NFL is definitely a bigger game when you look at when you look at some of the Heisman players who have you know won it. They don't do much in the NFL, but you know that's a whole nother that's that's a whole nother episode for you guys that will have yep. a conversation like that. But that's all we got for you today. You know, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. You know, follow, do all that feedback. You know, do what you gotta do to tell us how we're doing, what we're doing, what we can do be, be doing. Just, just you know. Just join the little fan club that doesn't exist quite and if, yet. Hey, Dennis Rodman, if you're listening, we'd love to have you on. Yeah, just, just yeah. I mean, honestly, we can turn this. We can go political. We can go basketball. We 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 can talk '90s. We can talk. We will take anyone. No, oh, we'll even take the hobo across the street. But we'll even. Yeah. I everyone mean, follow the social medias. They'll be linked down below. I mean, Jake Paul, Logan Paul. You want to have us on impulsive and have a chat? Invite us. Yeah. Have a good time, just chill, laugh, we'll talk we'll talk about how you guys are getting CTE and then talk to you know, have a good time. But hey everyone, enjoy the playoffs, super wild card weekend. Enjoy enjoy the other sports, you know, basketball, college basketball, it's in full swing. You know, enjoy it while it lasts. Before you know it, we're gonna be stuck in the in the dog days of summer with no very little sports and have to watch baseball. And we don't like that. Just kidding, baseball's pretty cool. But have a good weekend everybody. Later.